Hey guys, Spencer Ross coming at you guys live again. And uh, this week I'm actually in JJ Books, which is a small cafe, an English American cafe in Madrid. Uh, and today, what I mentioned is we're going to be talking about apartments, apartment hunting, and the different barrios that you could live in in Madrid, and what kind of benefits and disadvantages some of those barrios may have. So. Uh, today, I actually have a couple good friends of mine with me, and I'm going to introduce you to them, and might say a little bit about them when they did the course, and so, here we go. Uh, first up, we have Jake here. Hi. Jake, introduce yourself, please. Hey. <laughs> Close your phone. Um, my name's Jake. I'm from North Carolina and the United States. Uh, I did the TT course last April, so I've been in Madrid almost a year, which is, wow. which is crazy to think about, uh, but I love it, yeah, so, yep. All right. Next up, name's Taylor. Hail from Texas, <laughs> and uh, I did a course with Spencer back in August, so I've only been here about six months, mm -hmm. but it's been great. I love the culture here, I love the people, love the food. I love the food. Yeah. What was talking about the food. So, thanks guys, appreciate it. So, what I mentioned earlier though is, we'll come back to them in a second with a little bit more. Um, we're going to talk about apartment styles and apartment living here in Madrid. So. When I first got here, I actually lived pretty close to the school. I lived in a place um, in a barrio called Salamanca, which is actually what they call the posh area of Madrid. But uh, I was only about a 10, 15 minute walk from the course, from the classes, so that was really, really nice. But something you can expect um, if you want to live with other people here in Madrid, uh, find an apartment with others, you can expect on average it's around 400 to 450 euros for an apartment per month, and that might not be including some of the, uh, the utilities that you have to give with that. But the next part is um, how I found it. So there's a couple great places to look, and one of them is Idealista. That's one of the best well-known places to go and find apartments here in Madrid. Uh, Idealista is an app as well as a uh, something online you can go to. And then I actually, on my new place where I'm living now is near Arguelles. And I'll, I'll try to link everything here after the video about where I'm living and some of these places I'm talking about. But I use an app called Body. It's B-A-D-I. And so if you are looking for apartments still uh, and you're in Madrid already, this is a great app. Um, it allows you to create a profile about yourself and then look at uh, the people that you might be living with in their profiles and see if you would match up personality-wise. But I had very good luck. I found my apartment through there. And again, I'm in the Arguelles Barrio, which is around northwest of Seoul, of the center of Madrid, but I'm still about a 10, 15 minute walk from there. Yeah, very close metro ride to the school still. Um, I take, t I literally have to try, uh, excuse me, switch trains, switch metros one time, and I'm at the school within 20 to 25 minutes. So, um, very close. But uh, let me go into the different barrios, and I'll go ahead and post these all in the description below after this. But some of the different barrios here in Madrid are you have Malasana, which is right now the center, and that's more of the what do you guys say, like the more hippie, live, uh, yeah. a lot more bars in this area in the Malasana. So if you're looking for uh, you know have a little bit more fun, maybe check out the Malasana area for for apartments. Um, then you have Arguelles, that's where I'm at currently, and that's a little more tranquilo, a little bit more relaxed, uh, working on that Spanish. And um, I'm really all, right off of Gran Via still, so I'm, like I said, I'm right in the center as well. Um, I mentioned Salamanca, that's actually the barrio that the school is in. And so if you look in the Salamanca area, um, the great thing I said is it's going to be nicer, nicer places, it's right next to the school, so you can walk to school every day. Uh, but then you have things in the center like La Latina, uh, La Vida Piez, um, and that's about it for and from those areas. Yeah, and Seoul in general. So, but um, again, I'm I'm, so, I'm in La Vida, uh, excuse me, Arguelles right now. But let's see where Jake and Taylor are at. Maybe you guys can tell us a little bit about your barrios. Of course. Hi. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I live in uh, I live very close to Seoul. So I live kind of on the border of La Latina and Seoul. I'm kind of like in that area. Uh, which is great because it's really close to everything, so I can pretty much I can walk to these guys' places. Heart of the um, city. Huh? Heart of the, the city. heart of the city for sure. <laughs> uh, I can walk around the you know oh, the, the heart of the city. I can walk to Retiro. Um, I can walk pretty much anywhere I want to, and anything everything is pretty close by metro too. Mm -hmm. uh, but you are going to pay a little bit extra for that. So um, right now I love my I love my flat, but uh, and I have two roommates. Uh, but I think 
after this, after our contract is up, we're going to look to move a little bit more north because that's where most of our jobs are, and we can afford to pay a little bit less. So right now, I think we're paying like around 400 each, but if we go north, like to Moncloa or somewhere that's a little bit more north, a little bit further from the center, but still like a 25 to 30 minute metro ride from Seoul, uh, we can get down to like the 300 to 25 range per person. So. How'd you find your apartment? Oh, yes. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Taylor. Um, yeah. Thanks, I, uh, I use Idealista um, to find my apartment. Uh, which I, but I had a lot of success because I was looking in June, which is when a lot of the apartments become available. Um, what I would recommend if you're coming in an off time of year or if you're coming and you're planning on working immediately after your course is maybe doing like a brief two months, two months contract with Airbnb or another service. Uh, because that gives you time, one, to meet people that you may want as your future roommates, and two, to kind of figure out maybe what parts of the city that you like, where you're going to be working, so you can plan on uh, lo you know, finding an apartment that's kind of located close enough to work, close enough to the center, close enough to the other people that you know. So that's what I did. I lived in a, an apartment for two months and then got a, a year-long contract mm -hmm. in a part of the city that I liked. Oh, nice. um, so I definitely recommend that as an option as well. Perfect. Thanks, Jake. And Taylor, same question to you, man. Where are you at right now, and how did you for find sure. your place? Well, actually, the first place I lived was in Arguez, not far from where Spencer is now. Uh, and I found them through the school. So if you talk to the school, they actually have connections to a housing agency that can put you with temporary housing that lasts about two months. Um, and since I've been here, I've only lived in studio apartments. I haven't had roommates, uh, which you definitely have to pay a little bit extra for, a little bit, quite a bit extra. But um, <laughs> yeah, so if you want, if you want to cut the prices down, you definitely want to try to find roommates. Now I'm living right next to Arguelles in uh, um, Malasan, not Malasania, what is it? You're yeah, in yeah, Malasania. Malasania, yeah, 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 that's right. Um, which is kind of one of the bigger bar districts in Spain. There's a lot of um, different kinds of clubs, bars, tapas places, uh, squares where people meet up. It's definitely a very lively district if you're trying to go out and like really.